the ground, there is obviously a, a white luminescence at the base of it. And I don't know what that's Correct. about. That would be the the focal point or the lens for the thing. Yeah. 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 Well, this this is uh, very interesting. Very interesting. So it might have been a calling card to uh, to somebody or some group of bodies. Don't yes, mess. Uh, or a demonstration of a certain level of knowledge. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, th these are the kinds of things that uh, are fascinating. And and if you hear anything else about that, um, I'd like to know because I, when they put the rocket story out, I just I posted it, but I just I've seen too many. It just mm, didn't work. It was too pat. It yeah. Didn't work for yeah. me. It no. didn't pass the smell test right away. No. And then I then I started listening to the um, some of these uh, other sources. There's a lot of Ruski podcasts out there, and these guys are making nice little podcasts and discussing all the things that are going on in in their version of the world. Uh -huh. uh, much of which does not, of course, reconcile with ours. Fortunately, or otherwise. Very interesting. Okay, uh, we've got a holiday season coming up so-called. I'm not seeing happy faces out there. Uh, do we see anything coming early in 2010 uh, after the holidays when people are tapped? They're tapped out now, and they're going to, of course, you got to spend to be happy. So what happens in early 2010? Any other things that in the day? Yeah, we, have, we do have the potential for a bank shutdown. That uh, still exists. That since September, but the mm -hmm. language is, is pointing for it after the context change, which, again, we note has moved up to the 19th. The, um, the bank shut down. What time on the 19th again, please? I want to write that. Uh, 5.51 a.m. Uh, Pacific Coast time. I localize everything, so you can do a UTC if you want. I'm not sure what the context change will be. It may indeed be economic, but it might be triggered by something like um, you know, a, a successful and or failed terror attack, for all mm -hmm. I know. But it's a huge emotional hit that will um, trail off probably by July because we'll have other issues by then. Wow. Wait a minute now. You're going to roll us from December 19th all the way to July? Yeah, but it's, if we go back to the, let's everybody be real clear so I don't get a bunch of, you know, you blew it kind of thing mail. If we go back to the uh, immigration issue, we had that big uh, flare-up in the spring yeah, that, yeah. that trailed off by the fall. It's true, you're right. So you have to look at these things as the, in the way we do with emotional waves. Yeah, right, whatever it is, right. it's going to change the context of that. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. going to be quite severe and will go with us until July. Hmm. But hey, people wait until November of 2010 and then early part of 2011 because we've got tipping points ahead of us. Now, this is what Gerald said. Oh, Terror yeah, attack, I, another 9-11 in 2010. It, boy, it, it may be war. I don't, I don't know if they'll go to the 9-11 level. Yeah, I mean, well, they won't well, have to if it's a Mideast war extending all over the place, yeah, a major see, regional the war. Okay, here's the problem. The, the Mideast war stuff we have, um, the archetype for war also extends out to the point where there's enough data to, to kind of support the idea that a, a mindset will shift in the part of people that could be our opponents, where they are not inclined to come and really screw with us for a lot of different reasons. They may just, as a result of the Israeli mistake, think that things have gone too far, and while they're quite happy to slowly... Uh, cripple the American military that's been causing uh, all these problems for all these years at the behest of all these uh, nut jobs. They may have to do something relatively rapidly. And so there's what's been called the three ships scenario. And the three ships scenario, as I understand it, is that there would be two ships off of probably the west coast of the U.S. and then one ship off of the east coast. And I don't know if they'd be Russian or Chinese. It, it just does not matter. And it wouldn't involve nuclear or anything like that. It would involve a rolling wave of electricity at certain hertz that would basically just kind of like take out all life. And it goes with the rotation of the planet. It works at a scalar level. And it is truly a like an ultrasound wave, and it's a near physical thing. And the hertz level is such that you're just walking along and your, your brain shorts out. Whether you're a bird or a human or an earthworm, it doesn't matter. Permanently? I'm sorry? Permanently? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. They get quite dead, no question about it. So they're erasing the blackboard. Correct. And it, and it, but, it, you know, it's not anything you really want to do. It's not like a neutron mm. bomb where you could potentially come in and farm in a few years because it, it theoretically kills all the life in terms of bacteria and all this kind of stuff. Now the whole food the chain goes, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's quite horrific, and it's screwed <clears> with the weather and so on. But I've actually seen a discussion uh, online uh, and uh, tracked down some hard copy 
among some Russians and um, and I believe a representative of the Chinese, although that was never really clear, uh, but a discussion as to whether that would be preferable to a nuclear attack on the U.S. And because if they if we go crazy and start this problem going off in their southern border, mm-hmm. causing issues for them, they have to have a response. They're really irritated with all the depleted uranium as it is now that's getting into their water supplies and all their systems, and it's causing issues all over. So. I don't know what the trigger would be, but the, our data really does show that the Israeli uh, mistake has a potential to engage us all in the Third World War. Mm-hmm. Not that that would be against the interest of the you know, shape-shifting reptilian bloodsuckers. They would like that. But the Russians and the Chinese, I don't know if they would play along. I think they may go to the three-ship solution anyway. Hmm. And by the way, that would probably take out Canada and some areas south of the border. It's not that discreet. It's going to be a hell of a power generator. Well, but see, there you go. It's not. It doesn't work that way. It's just like this thing that we saw over the area of Norway. It doesn't. It takes gigawatts to get it started, but once it's rolling, and they can propagate from that. I see. see. Yeah, it's grounded out basically. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, something is showing up in November of 2010. That's big. We've got lots to go through before then, but yes, we have tipping points then. And a tipping point is very much like 9-11. Your life changes instantly and stays that way for a long time. Yeah. All right. Eat those pies, folks. Enjoy. Yeah, prepare and, and, you know, put away all the pie supplies you can if you get rough. All right. Thanks, Cliff. And uh, again, for all you people in the military or law enforcement who are active duty, Send Cliff an email. Just write Gary McKinnon, M-C-K-I-N-N-O-N, in the subject line. And the address is moon at halfpasthuman.com. And don't forget... Free report. That's right. Free report. Don't forget. Shape of Things to Come, Issue 3, available now, $10. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Talk soon. Okay. Good night. Bye.